question, when you have all these different layers and substance of a business, how do you put that all together in terms of a brand? Because you have so much that's going on at once. How do you make sure that you're consistent throughout all of that? That's a, that's a good question. Um, you always have to go back to the core, right? Mm -hmm. uh, what do you want to achieve when you're saying yes to a request? Mm -hmm. Um, I'm very careful, even though you have mentioned that we, we, we do have a very large mm. spectrum of services we can provide. But if you really think, it's nothing but just human resources. Okay. So we'll not do anything that will not represent our clients okay. and our, our brand well. Okay. So even though, you know, because the human resources, it does open up a lot of, uh, of a big spectrum. But you have to go back to the core. What's your niche? What, what, what are you good at? Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of New York 100. Today, we are filming in one of the most iconic centers and buildings here in New York City. We're at the Rockefeller Center, baby. So this is a good background. Hopefully you'll come here and you'll see one day for yourself. Anyway, let's get right into it. So events. If you're running a business, operating a business, small, large, multinational, you will need events. And I want to talk about why it's important to have events for your businesses and conferences. Also, what makes a successful event? What makes a successful conference? How do you make sure that everything is ran logistically the right way through people your staffing right so so today i'm sitting with the the biggest the best the most boutique staffing agency here in new york city they also do all other services we're going to focus on the staffing today epic staffing agency that's correct nice to meet you andre nice to meet you um it's, it's been a, a pleasure to be here yeah man pleasure to be here we're sitting in rockefeller center it's been a long <laughs> way to, to get to where we are today a lot of um, background movement. But um, so I want to say, well, first off, Epic Staffing Agency, for those of you who don't know who, what it is, can you just introduce the cameras and us? What is Epic Staffing Agency? Sure, absolutely. It would be my pleasure. So we are a, and thank you for the kind words, okay. by the way. Yes, we are a staffing services uh, agency who provides event, conference, and executive recruitment services. Um, we specialize in, in details. I think what it makes us different, uh, it's the fact that, you know, we, we, are, we are not bankers that decided to, okay, let's go into staffing and human resources. We have been in industry um, for over combined experiences for over 50 years um, in service and hospitality. Um, you know, so then when we decided to open the agency, we wanted to, we, we do understand what service is. And we, when we decided to open the agency, we decided to create something. Uh, we're not reinventing the, the wheel. Mm -hmm. We are just making sure that service is applied. Mm. Um, and I think the biggest things, uh, or the biggest difference for us is because we truly care to what we do. Mm. I mean, it's, it, we love what we do, I guess. So you've actually had a number of years, you said, in corporate and in hospitality before this. So tell me about your background. How did you even get into hospitality? Yes, absolutely. Um, I grew up in a house where my mom was a pastry chef. Mm. So if you think like at 10 years old, I am actually piping in wedding cakes. She specialized in wedding cakes. Mm. Uh, so I think, I think hospitality, food, services in my blood. Mm. Um, I don't have a personality to be a chef. Mm. Uh, I'm a great chef, but I only like to cook as a hobby. Mm. Uh, it's, it works for me as a therapy. Like it's, you know, like some people, uh, for me, it's like when I go to a market and I get inspired uh, cooking, it's like a therapy, but I could mm. never be a chef. Mm. So going back to the background, so that's how, I st how everything started. You know, everything I've learned, I learned seeing from my, my mom. Mm. And then I decided to go to culinary and hospitality school. Uh, I graduated from um, Escuela Superior de Baleares in Spain. And uh, then I moved to Miami. Mm. And I have been in industry in all facets of the hospitality from mm. rooms division, front desk, staff and food and beverage mm. for Roughly, um, oh, well, around uh, 15 to, to 15, 18 years. 15, wow, that's, that's crazy. All right, so you, you come from, you said your, your mother was in baking, yeah. and you were kind of influenced by that. 
also, I think naturally, you're like really good with making people feel comfortable. Yeah. Right? I was late this, yeah? Man, it's what I do. What yeah. am, you know, like it, it, you can't fake it. That's not yeah. something either you have or you don't. Yeah. You can learn the skills, yeah. but you know, you either good people or not. Yeah. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, because I'm and I was late. I was like, damn it. And you're like, hey, Mr. you want coffee? I'm like, that's the last thing I'm thinking about coffee. I'm 20 minutes late. And you was like, coffee. And I mean, so I can see how it was kind of innate in you. Maybe it was instilled through your mother, but I can see that natural ability to care for people. Do you think that was something innate? Do you think someone, okay, I'm very introverted. Do you think that's a skill? You think someone can learn how to, you know, be good with people? Or, or is one, what's one of the two things you can offer someone if they want to be more personable? Listen, of course, of course, it's trainable, yes. Mm -hmm. um, and that's part of what we specialize in. Mm -hmm. It's kind of pretentious to say in a way, but uh, we do have an Epic University. It is a certification program mm -hmm. that you, when we hired uh, a temp staff mm -hmm. or an event staff, conference mm -hmm. staff, they have to be certified mm -hmm. by us, by own internal training in order to be placed in any jobs. Okay. Um, and I think to answer your question, yes, uh, but the key is you hire well. You gotta hire somebody that has the heart. Mm. We we don't care about skills because the skills we can train you. Now I so I do want to get into staffing in in uh in a bit in a bit of a second. But just for the people on board, for those of you who run events, maybe you might be thinking about running an event or you have run a few conferences that didn't go as well. First off, you know why is running a conference or an event important for a business? Why is it important? Don't know if I understand your question. So let, let's, because let's, because think of us as a general think think of us as a general contractor, right? Mm -hmm. You're the architect. Mm -hmm. You design your plan. Mm -hmm. You pass it on to us. Mm -hmm. We we become an extension I'm, of your I'm own just, business. I'm just saying for someone who's maybe looking into doing events, right? Okay. They're looking into conferences, right? And they may be they may be on the fence about it, right? So they might be exploring potentially your services. So first off. Why? What's the importance, or how can a conference or an event benefit a company? In your, in your view? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, because it, it, because the events, I don't know how to answer the question because it, it I think it would vary, right? It all depends on what your end goal is. Mm -hmm. So if you're a company that that sells a product, mm -hmm. uh, let's say pharmaceutical, we mm -hmm. do a lot of uh, uh, pharmaceutical conventions. Mm -hmm. um, what are you doing? Is you're uniting all the doctors, and you know you're about to release a new a new medicine. I think it's it's educational, mm -hmm. I guess, for some companies. It's, but it's like networking. It. Mm. You know what? I, I think at, and at, to answer your question, I think the the conference, uh, the conferences and, or events in general, mm. it's a way of uh, of creating a, a, a networking. Mm. So creating a network, and you I use you use the term unify people. Unify. So okay. now this both. I just want to keep it general for a second, just so for whoever's listening. Um, so there's two sides to what people would consider a great event. There's the actual attendee joining the event, and, there's, act, and there's, the, there's the organizer side and what they think was a great event. So first off, what do you think is a great experience for attendee? What do you think attendees are looking for? When a lot is happening behind the scenes and they have no idea. Mm. You know, whatever is, is hap whatever is happening in front of the house, which is a term that we use to, mm. to say whatever is happening at the convention, mm. at the event, the attendee, it's like, have no idea. And some of the examples could be, you know, uh, your equipments are delayed. Mm. Uh, you had issue with some of the permits. Mm. You have no shows on staff. <laughs> so those are the things that could happen. Uh. That, you know, uh, the key is that you continue doing your mm. best. Mm. And, uh, and a successful for me, a successful event for me will be when you overcome Ooh. all those uh, unforeseen things mm. Mm. and the guest Ooh. experience, it was like, wow, this is the best event I ever had. Uh, so I'll, I'll tell you a little bit of a story. I, I held an event once in, uh, in Shanghai before. I was a speaker, different panels, why not? And I had like maybe five, seven speakers. And literally the morning of one of the speakers who had a 40 minute slot said, oh, I can't make it right now. What's, do you, can you think of a story or a heroic moment where you came in and you just, you turned maybe a horrific story into like a, 
a great ending? Do you oh, have well, one of those? I, 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 for, first of all, I would say that what happened to the speaker is just life. Yeah. It could happen to all of us. Yeah. You know, we do have 89 staff members yeah. scheduled to uh, organize a production. Uh, we have 80 to 90 liabilities. Yeah. You know, people get sick, mm. people go into, you know, life happens. Yeah, exactly. uh, to answer your question, I think almost every day, every event or every, yeah. every, every event, uh, it, it does almost feel that we, we, are, we are like, uh, you know, creating, a, you know, becoming a hero mm. of that situation because mm. like I said, it's life. Life is unpredictable. Mm. So that's why it's great to work with the outside company. So question, I know you do staffing, and, which we'll get into staffing and recruitment, but do you do like event management or control throughout the event Correct, well? yeah, I think that's okay. our niche. Okay. Yeah, our niche is that um, the best way I could describe is that you are the architect, oh. right? So you design your event, you pass it on that information oh, to right. us, and we will execute from beginning, middle, and end. Okay. And that's event management, uh, supervision, mm -hmm. staff, and one of the biggest things is to make sure that we understand your culture and your brand. Mm -hmm. That's one of those things that for us, it's very important because uh, at the end of the day, when we, when we arrive to an assignment, mm -hmm. it, it's no longer Epic Staffing mm -hmm. Agency. We are representing yes. our client. Yes. So, and then at that point, we're representing your brand, representing your goals, and uh, exceeding your expectations. I think that's, uh, that's one of our biggest niche. Mm -hmm. It's that we focus on the details. And again, just, we're gonna stay a little bit general. This is probably last like general question, but like, so I'm a business, right? I wanna, I wanna keep my costs low, right? You know what? I don't need Epic Staffing Agency. I got my crew, I got my accountants over there, the sales crew over there, graphic designers. We're gonna make this event happen ourselves. We're not gonna hire anybody, right? What's the difference between doing and managing your event in-house versus hiring out you know a company like yours epic staffing agency um i guess the biggest the biggest thing would be experience mm. you know we are i would, I would say almost the most important events mm. between miami and new york 99 percent we are somewhat involved mm. uh i think using a company like ourselves it will give you a peace of mind because life happens mm. situations happens and uh, we have the tools to overcome almost everything mm -hmm. and the experience to overcome almost everything. Mm -hmm. So we have a very large uh, staff database. We have a very large vendor uh, database. So I, I guess uh, mm -hmm. we, have, we have the tools to, have more tools, more tools to, to make your event successful. And like you said, there's a lot of things that happened on the day previously, maybe even post the event that your staff members may not have experience with, but you will have that. All right, so we know the importance of events. We also know that it's important to hire someone out to do events as well. So, so let's talk about one of your services. You offer many services from ex executive recruitment. I'll let you line out your services. What, so what, what does Active Staffing Agency provide? You know, I, w I would say we provide human resources. Okay. And then with that, we, we provide many, many staffing solutions. Uh, it could be a temp to hire, it could be a short-term, long-term uh, staffing, and we also provide executive recruitment. Okay, so it said attempt to hire? T attempt to hire. Uh, yeah. attempt, attempt to hire, Yeah. Um, and short-term staffing? Short-term and long-term temp staff. Okay. Temp staffing services. And this is for executives or just any? The temp staff, it, temp staff is focused on hospitality and event and conventions. Okay. Hotels, convention centers, uh, okay. catering companies. Okay. Um, you know, it, it, when, it, when, it thinks, when, when you think of human resources, mm. I think nowadays everybody wants to have the guest relations experience. Mm. So, you know, we have placed temp staff in, in banks that would like mm. to, to, you know, when, when a guest or when a client comes in, to the branch that they feel like they're walking into the Four Seasons. Mm. So our niche is to make sure that uh, we provide the, the most trained and qualified staff. Okay, so first off, pre-training, because I know you also train these people, correct? Correct. So before training, um, so what's your methodology, your process for finding these people? Because some somebody can look very good on paper until you meet them. So what's your kind of your, pro what do you process for meeting these people and making sure they actually link 
with the company. There's some family recipes that I'm not going to share oh, everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, don't get too <laughs> technical, but just in general. What's no, the I'm yeah. kidding, I'm kidding. Yes, I, I can tell you. I think there's two things here. Yeah. One, it's you You got to hire well. Um, when, when For us, what it matters is personality mm. and if somebody cares. Mm. Uh, everything mm. else can we can train. Mm. And I think part of our Epic University, we do have a practical program that... Um, in reality, we just, you know, that's a, one of our final steps mm. before you actually get placed. Mm. If you don't get certified, you won't be able to be to be placed. So it's your final step of the hiring process, if, as an example. So if you are a bartender, mm. so you have to go to the mixology class and you have to perform as a bartender. Mm. And if you don't, and then you won't be qualified as a bartender, you probably will be a brand ambassador. You can work as a support staff. Mm. So for us, it's a three-step uh, process, mm. uh, but the most important one, it's the final, with the, which is the practical mm. training uh, on our Epic University uh, uh, program. So let, I just want to touch on the three, the three processes. First is, so what are the three processes, first off? Yes, so we have a two-step interview process. An interview. Yes. Uh -huh. And then the final uh, step, it's the it's the Epic University program, okay. which is a practical. It's, it's a training. classroom. You do have a classroom style, which is it's an ongoing program. It's an ongoing training mm -hmm. uh, that focuses on back to hospitality, mm -hmm. uh, hospitality basics, mm -hmm. mixology, uh, and also f before you get hired, the most the, going back to the three points, it's your practical training. Okay, so tell me about the interviews because. Um I've done a lot of interviews. I'm pretty sure people do interviews as well. So maybe I'll, I'll split this in two then. For the person going into the interview, what would you, what would you want to, someone trying to get the job, what's, what's the best type of advice that you would give them if someone wants the job? Be natural. Be natural. Be natural. I think, okay. you know, uh, a recruiter within a, 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 it's a skill, right? For you to become a recruiter, it is a skill that you learn with experience and all that. But it's also, uh, I, I guess, uh, I think that within 30 seconds, you know if the candidate will work or not. So, you know, I would say go to an interview and, and show your best. Be natural, be authentic. Uh, you know, your experience would, would speak for itself, but Usually, a recruiter is looking for someone that would fit the culture. Mm. That's really good to know. And like you said, the uh, the skill set maybe some un instead of places where like bartending, we need the actual certifications. Otherwise, the skill set you can learn, but the personality is important. All right. That's the key. Mm. That's the key, especially especially in the industry that. Every event is different. Yeah. Every event you're dealing with different personalities, mm -hmm. different clients, different wishes. So for us, the biggest thing for, and I think why we're so successful, it's that when we hire, we hire someone who cares. Mm -hmm. uh, someone that it's almost like a chameleon that could, could have uh, a flexible personality and adapt to every single need of our, our clientele database. Just a quick, quick question. Is there a particular question that, that you'd like to ask someone I do, you, I do. Do you want to, do you want to share that? I, no? I don't mind. I'll, I'll okay. share it with you. I do. Okay. Uh, I've always asked, who's your mentor in life? Who's your mentor? Who do you look up to? Because oh. I think, uh, you know, for me, it shows me who you are as a person. Wow. I'll ask you then. Who's your mentor then? Uh, I, I, I have a few. Okay. And I think as, uh, you know, but I think my mom, my mom was a, a big mentor for me. Um, Go-getter, attitude, a fighter. Uh, so I think she was my, my most, my, my mom and my grandmother, they were very powerful women. And I think they inspired me to, to be who I am today. Yeah. Cheers. Thanks for opening up. Um, I appreciate that. And if someone was to actually say that to you, how would you feel about them? Hire them on the spot? If they said their mentor was their mom, how would you how would you feel about that? If they said that, you know, I, I, what I look for it it's for like when I, when I ask the question, when of our recruiters are asking that question, mm -hmm. it's just to see the reaction. Oh, you know, like it, it, it when you when you go into 
uh, when somebody admires or when somebody it, it, it's looking up to someone, you see just how they, they speak about it. Can you I, know, it's almost like so, when you see this amazing dish in front of you and you get so excited yeah. to, to, to eat it, I think it's almost the same analogy. It's like when you ask the question and somebody is so excited and so, uh, oh yeah. my goodness, it's my former boss, uh -huh. it's my best friend, it's my mom. Uh, you know, I think it, it shows their personality at that moment. So I guess I'll do this. This is off camera. This is, this is why I, when I, just so you know, when I do my interviews, I don't have 20 questions listed. I just have topics and then I create the questions, right? So off script a little bit. Um, I'll tell you how I felt about my, my honest response when you said that to me. Before that, I'm going to tell you what, who my mentor, well, my mentor, my mentor who I look, who I look up to. Yeah, either or. My mentor or my mentor is different, but who I look up to, what, what, well, in particular. Who, who inspires you? I think that's, 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 that's the question. Who inspires me? Honest, honestly, there's a lot of people like YouTube has opened up like there's a lot of Googles on YouTube. It's opened up a lot of people to me. But honestly, what inspires me the most is, I guess, is projecting myself 20, 30 years from now and seeing the potential that I can be. So I guess I'm really lured to my potential in the future and I try to live up to that. I guess that just knowing my potential and trying to live up to that, the that's what really inspires yeah. me. Yeah. So based off that experience, first I want to say when you told me that, I was like, man, I like this guy, man. I like this guy. <laughs> I, just, whatever. I felt really connected with you. Yeah. Very down to earth, right? Yeah. How does, how, if someone was to say, I'm inspired by my future self, what would you think about them? Uh, just don't get caught up on your ego. That's yeah. the only thing very I would say. <laughs> just don't get caught up on the ego because it could play tricks on you. You yeah. know, I, I, I think, I think that uh, I appreciate that. Mm. What are you saying? Because being on my own since 16, mm. uh, I had to look up, you know, I had to find within me a lot of answers and a lot of questions mm. of things that I've never faced it before. Mm. So I inspired, uh, you know, I look back and I was like, wow, you know, I, I'm, I'm proud to some of the decisions I make, even the mistakes I make, I made, uh, pardon me. Um, so, uh, yeah, just, just, just be careful. It's a very fine line yeah. of, uh, you know, don't let your ego take over. Oh, see, now you, get, you, get to know, you do get to know somebody's personality, that question, because yeah. I am quite egotistical, quite stubborn as well. I'm very stubborn. Um, all right, so, so back on topic then. So we, we mentioned kind of previously, um, I was talking about like some events can have a lot of things going on. You said that attend the best events is where attendees don't know what's going on in the background, right? So let's talk about people because you're you are in the business of people, right? And people are very unpredictable. You know, they they arrive at they say they arrive at eleven, they arrive at ten twenty. They say interview starts at eleven, it's damn near twelve thirty, right? So people are unpredictable, right? So how do you kind of safeguard yourself from at least mitigating? You know these problems. So, how do you kind of govern people or manage, in a sense, whatever the term you use, govern, manage, oversee? How do you kind of safeguard yourself from? You know, you could you could never be over prepared. Okay. But I think over over pre, over prepare yourself in anything you do in life. It's the key. You know, we have a lot of systems in place for every, almost every single scenario you can think of. We have we have done. Uh, that we have experienced in the past. Yeah. So from, you know, additional 20% for every event we have, we, we overbooked 20% mm. uh, to, you know, uh, uh, scheduling the staff mm. between 30 minutes to an hour before of the scheduled mm. time by the client. So those are the, the small little things that I can tell you that uh, only experience can, can, can help you yes. achieve. Mm. Um, so those are the two the two things that I would say that uh, that that we do and it becomes mm -hmm. we become successful because the client doesn't know mm -hmm. the people that got into car mm -hmm. accidents the people who wake yeah. up who woke up sick mm -hmm. so at the end of the day if they requested eighty people eighty people are on site eighty people are on time mm -hmm. uh, the rest is all us mm -hmm. you know all the all the steps we we put in place mm -hmm. to make sure that the end result it's exactly what you ask for mm -hmm. so just to recap overbook in some cases and prepare early so schedule them early yeah. and it's uh, basic uh, uh, like i said we are not reinventing anything mm -hmm. we're just making sure that we're implementing mm -hmm. services and hospitality and everything we do no it's really that's really um yeah like i said it's nothing like 
It's not, not brain, it's it's not not brain surgery. Yes. Anymore. It also brings it to the point where even just before this interview, the co when we went downstairs, uh -huh. you overprepared. You you scheduled me in to come upstairs. You did everything the right way for me to have a smooth entrance. Still something happened, right? So it's life. Mm -hmm. Life is unpredictable. And you it, it, listen, you have to always have plan A, B, C, D, E, F. That's what we do. Okay, so we know the importance of events, the points of people in events, how to manage or oversee people. But I just want to get into like, okay, how was this actual company built? I understand you have a, um, a background in hospitality. So tell me about, tell, sorry, tell me about the formations of this. How did, you, how did it actually become a reality, that, that origin story? Sure, absolutely. It would be my pleasure. It, uh, it came from working in the industry mm -hmm. and I've always uh, in need of qualified uh, staff. Mm. So uh, I realized on my last position as a uh, in 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 the hospitality management um, that it, you know we, it was missing an agency that was focused um, on Ooh. service mm. uh, and driven by providing the best quality services. So that's why Epic came about. It came about um, us humbly trying to mm. set a footprint of an agency who provide temp staff mm. that, you know, there's no much guarantees with mm. the temp staff, but providing the best temp staff agency sure. out there, services, and, yeah. And so you say we, uh, I, I've, I've kind of, I've had a discussion with your partner, Scott. So who's a part of your team? Um, just the team. Uh, uh, listen, Scott, Scott, it's, how would I translate this? I will be, uh, Epic will be uh, nothing without him. I mean, okay. he's a uh, more of like an artist mentality. You know, I uh, I, I love the people uh, relations, but mm -hmm. Scott, it's the brain of this operation, no mm -hmm. doubt. I think that you know we are successful image operations mm -hmm. based uh, because of him. I will say your branding is really on point. Your Thank branding you. is amazing, and. Thank um, you. He's an expert. He's a, yeah, he's yeah. a brand strategist, right? He yes. comes from a branding background. He does, yes. He, he, uh, his background, it's marketing and, mm. and branding, mm. Vegas uh, for, for many years. You know, you Scott is my friend. Scott, okay. uh, Scott is my friend for, for many years. Uh, and then I was working 16 hours a day in a hotel and I wanted to do something different. I wanted to, you know, like I said, create a, a footprint and services that would last forever. I, I know it's a little pretentious, but I wanted to make sure that I had a little bit of a footprint in that area. Mm -hmm. And I remember the day that I, I had the idea of creating a staffing agency. Uh, and I went to his office and within five minutes, he says, I'm in. I was like, what do you mean you're in? He says, I'm in. I was like, oh, wow, great. Wow. Uh, within less than six months, we had a company completely set up. Mm -hmm. You know, and then within three months of, of Opening the company, um, we had a, a you know a very uh, major contract okay. with the local museum uh, in Miami, where our headquarters is. Right. Our company headquarters is Miami, and we have expanded to New York around three years ago. All right, so you're kind of stacking my. I have questions on top of questions now. So you establish this, and within three months, you get a first big contract, right? That's very like that's really good, you know. So like, first of all, how did you? get that first contract and did you reach out to them directly was it like how did you get that first contract you know up to this day we are around eight years in business now uh, most of our business is a word of mouth or um, repeat guest mm. um, I remember I did have a mentor um, back then, it, it, and then I, it, he knew a little bit of my path, where I wanted to do. I was a bit frustrated to what I was doing. I wanted to do something more. I wanted to feel proud of what I was achieving in life. And uh, when, I, when I had the company all set up, I sent him an email. I said, hey, I'm ready to go. And I think, listen, business is nothing but connections. Mm. You know, you always one email away, one call away, uh, one person away to but, you know, to bust the bubble. And I think that's what it was. It's connection, it's the people you meet, mm -hmm. and you execute, execute, um, you know, and exceed in your expectations because you have to, to care to, and, and love what you do. Mm. 
So that first customer, was that through a connection? Yes. Wow, million, brilliant. And that's because you also had 20 years of... True, and, and, and yes, yes, I have... You something brand new. No, 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 no. I, it, it, it's almost like I wanted to continue to do what I love, okay. which is hospitality, service, food, and beverage. But I wanted to... What I do now, I, I, the way I, I could describe is that instead of working mm. from one, for one brand in particular, mm. we provide services to everybody. Mm. And most of my clients are former colleagues, um, people that know me from the industry mm -hmm. or have worked with me. And, and, you know, like I said, most of our business are uh, word of mouth. So I have another question, and it's more personal, right? I'll tell you exactly where I'm at in my business, right? So I've been doing this for about four years. When I first started doing this, it was freelance basis. I mean, it's like small projects, $300 event here, $150. And I was doing it abroad as well. And it was a, it was I was a graphic designer, and I would go home and do the, and videotape in the weekends, right? And eventually, I started doing this full time. And then last year, I had my biggest like just failure. Like I've I lost a lot of money, right? Bad bad movement, bad investment, right? And so this has been my comeback year, right? So when I first like early twenty, like you know, this this year, early this year, I was like I was wiped out, right? Been my comeback year, right? But I had all that knowledge and experience, right? And a little bit of connections. So then I'm at a point now, I'm at a point where, okay, boom, I was back to normal. Within the last six months, everything is like really expanded really rapidly for me. And I'm in the period of growing pains, right? So I wanna ask you like, how do you deal with the growing pains of the business? Because you're just one person and you wanna expand. How, do you, how did you grow into a multinational? company you know uh i went through what are you going through right now uh i i, I also think i'm going to go through again i think it's it, it's business it's life ups and downs upside downs i think uh the key is to never let your failures stop you you know and always go back to the dream what's my dream what's my goal it's become that resilient personality that no matter what comes your way you will pull through I think that's the best, the best uh, advice because, uh, you know, uh, eventually you're always going to have loss of sales, mm -hmm. market, um, mm -hmm. contracts, they're expired, mm -hmm. you know, there, there's a cycle. It's a normal cycle, just like in life. You go up, 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 up and down, up and down, up and down your whole life. Mm -hmm. that's, that's just normal. I think it's that uh, understanding that this also will pass. Yeah. And you gotta just focus on your okay. dream. And then I'm, I'm actually advice from me to you personally, right? So I'm at a stage now where um, I'm managing about I'm managing four customers right now. These are like contracts, right? So I'm about to I'm about to leave one. And it's like, and also this is my passion. I love doing these interviews. And I'm at a point now where it's hot, like, well, like of course, all right. I'll, I'll just say it like this: time is my issue now. When you're first getting started, money is the issue, right? But now, I'm, I'm comfortable now, but time is my issue. I don't have a lot of time. So what would be your advice for someone who's, they have these contracts and I'm, I'm really unable to like really grow and scale because I'm so focused on what I'm doing, focus on, what would be your advice to someone who's kind of like stuck in the success? You have to delegate. Delegate. You have to let, let you gotta let control. Mm. Let it go, let it go. Mm. You're never gonna grow. Yeah. If you are a one-man show, yeah. you, will st you will not grow. You yeah. got to make sure that you trust somebody, you train somebody, and you let it go. Yeah. Let it go. Wow. Thank you for me. No, you, thank right? you. My pleasure. My pleasure. Yes, you got to let it go. You got to make yeah. sure that, you know, don't ever, don't ever uh, forget to make sure that you are passing your, your soul, your, your love, to that person, you know, you're making sure that they are following your dreams, mm. but you gotta delegate. Mm. Otherwise, you won't be able to do it. You know, the bigger thing of, of your bringing somebody, even if they don't have the experience, is people see sometimes what we can't see. Right? Oh, okay. So you get a completely set of fresh eyes mm -hmm. because you get so caught up something in your own ways and the way you wanna think to achieve, and somebody fresh comes in. And they see something so simple that you're like, oh, why well, didn't think about that, you know? Mm.
Well, yeah, that's, that's exactly Collaboration. That's it. this, this what it is. And the thing is, I struggle to let go of control because I've been doing everything myself for this I, long. I, I see myself in you, man. I get it. I get and, it. You know, it's like, very difficult. Okay. It's difficult because your mindset as a, as a manager, right? So in operations, you, you still have to, to uh, have a team. Right. But there's a, you know, when you become an entrepreneur, you, mu you must let go yeah. of control because it's, you know, and delegate. Otherwise, you won't, you won't be able to grow. So what's that feeling like? I guess, when did you, when did you decide to let go? Who, who was the first person or people that you decided to let go? How did you do that, like practically then? Um, let me think. This was probably around 2014 okay. where um, we had just signed a very large uh, agreement uh, for a show and uh, we just needed to, to have more people. We couldn't do without additional staff. And uh, it's scary. It's scary because you, you're not sure if they, you know, like if they'll perform as you, as you, as you wish. Uh, you know, there is, a, there is a saying in Portuguese that says, uh, casa, casa de ferreiro espeto de pau, which is like uh, a wood uh, uh, still, uh, how you call it, uh, a welder, but in his house, he uses a wood spoon kind of thing. You know, I mean, I mean, uh, I, I, I mean recruiting and all that, but sometimes you still have that fear. Like, am I doing the right decision? Am I making the right decision? When it's for you, you always have, in the beginning, you kind of doubt it, you know, that uh, you got to be humble that you don't, you, you're not perfect, yeah, you know. No, you I just got to let go and believe in your dream and, and, and move forward. Cheers, man. I, I Is this off that. camera or on? That was one. That was pretty good. That's pretty yeah. good. That's on. And it flowed. And so, you know, just to wrap up here, I mean, we spoke about a lot from importance of events, the services you provide, points of staffing. So we haven't, we talked about all your services. We haven't talked much about executive recruiting. So I'd like to touch on that before we, we end. So what's, can you tell us more about what you do for executive, uh, or exec, executive recruitment? Or executive recruitment. Absolutely. So um, we are experts in, in recruitment. Mm -hmm. um, and what we do is uh, we, we have a internal mm -hmm. uh, formula that we have created. Mm -hmm. Uh, and what we do is we not only match uh, a candidate's background, but we understand the culture of the client and trying to match culture and background mm. because it's very important. You know, um, you're thinking of a white glove service, candidate that has experience on a white glove service, which is you think of more of an old fashioned style of service, mm. will not work in a new, um, a more hip, uh, hotel brand. Mm. So it, it's very important that you're not only matching somebody that has a background, mm. but it does also match the culture of the company. Mm. And I think that's why we have a 96% ratio of, of, uh, of placement. Uh, because and also it, it, it's it's uh, time and 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 money that you save because you're letting us do all the the cleanup and and the prep work and our process is pr it's pretty simple. We most of the time we just send you for a final interview uh, because we have already done the pre-interviews, the interviews. Uh, we understand your culture and we just uh, do a, a a placement match on those two keys: background and culture. All right, so a few more questions because you just opened my mind to something else. But um, so technically, so when you find these people, again, they, they, they may apply directly to you, you then you do the two-step process, and then... No, the oh, recruitment this, this is, is different, different than temp so, staff. Yeah, so you, what's the, the defining difference? Because I'm not, I want to just make sure there's a defining A temp staff, it is uh, a candidate that will be working in Epic roster. Okay. And uh, an executive recruiting is a placement that we'll do in our client's roster. Mm. Okay. Um, so basically, you are a hotel that's in need of a food and beverage controller. Uh, okay. um, you, are, you are a hotel mm. or a restaurant who needs a general manager. Mm. Um, we, we do have general managers in our roster. Mm. Uh, and then we will we will do it. We place the the candidates to you, but they are not our staff. Is this New York, Miami, or is this? Montana? It's international. Yeah, international. executive recruitment. It's anywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have okay. placed uh, staff and candidates in any 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 anywhere. And then last, because I know you're celebrating your birthday today, so I do want to kind of wrap up here. And then um, so, 
find a personal question and then, and then if you like really quick question. Personal question because it actually links to what we just said. Um, you, you offer many kind of multi-layered, many different services. It can, yes, it's, it's when, I'm, when you break it down, it's staffing, recruitment, um, what is it, HR, and then you're also a little bit of a PR, event management, marketing, brand, like you're, you're a lot of operations and you're expanse to a lot of things, right? So my question is, and this is personal for me, maybe someone that might be experiencing this as well, you start off as one thing. I started off actually with web design, right? That was, that was my, I started off with web design and I branched off to graphic and then video photography and then now to the point where I don't even know what to call myself, right? <laughs> so question, when you have all these different layers and substance of a business, how do you put that all together in terms of a brand? Because you have so much that's going on at once. How do you make sure that you're consistent throughout all of that? That's a, that's a good question. Um, you always have to go back to the core, uh -huh. right? Uh, what do you want to achieve when you're saying yes to a request? Mm. Um, I'm very careful, even though you have mentioned that we, we, we do have a very large mm. spectrum of services we can provide. But if you really think, it's nothing but just human resources. Okay. So we'll not do anything that will not represent our clients okay. and our, our brand well. Okay. So even though, you know, because human resources, it does open up a lot yes. of, uh, of, a, of a big spectrum but you have to go back to the core. What's your niche? What, what, what are you good at? Um, and I think that's, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's, I think answers a little bit of your question. That's brilliant. And we're going to end it there. If you want, <laughs> thank you because it's time to go, man. We, we got to celebrate some birthdays today. And it's a great weekend, it's beautiful outside, right? So thank you so much for watching this. And the last couple of questions. Um, urgency or patience? Patience. Really? Law of attraction or law of action? Law of action. Law of action. Um, love it, love, love action. Love it's a very small detail mm. every day, mm. every hour. Mm. It's almost like a, a tree, a plant where mm. you, it's, it's care. You gotta, mm. you gotta care, you gotta, you gotta fix, you gotta mold, yeah. Hard work or smart work? Both. If you had to choose one or the other. Hard work. I choose hard work as well. Eventually, you, you will become smart, but I say yeah, hard work. Hard work. Important. New York, in one word. The best place on the planet. I'll accept that. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to get in contact with Epic Staffing Agency, they're based in both Miami and New York. Get in contact with them. They have some big things in store planned um, that we talked about off camera, right? So big plans for the business. And it can really help you out if you have an event and you need to have some, some people. Make sure it's managed correctly. Again, there's a lot of things that can go wrong in an event. So you need that experience to make sure those, that, those things can be mitigated, completely eliminated, or fixed during the day of. So if you need help with that, go to epicstaffingagency.com. Correct. Follow them on Instagram. I'm going to leave all the links below. Thank you for watching this interview all the way through. I appreciate it. Subscribe if you haven't already. And we bring a lot of amazing guests like this. And remember, be great. Cheers. Boom. That was really wow. good, man. We're, Thank yeah, you. That was really good. He's the bad down and take it off. Thank you, man. That was awesome. Yeah, Inspiring. You ended yeah. with really, like, really strong. Thank you oh, very much. Really?